So you guys know that I'm kind of a masochist. I like playing games that are objectively terrible for your amusement. <laughs> and so today to break in the brand new studio, I decided we were going to try together Skull Island Rise of Kong, because why not? <laughs> if you've somehow not heard about this game, people are saying this is the new contender and front runner for the worst game of 2023. And the Steam reviews back it up. Thankfully, it seems like not many people are bothering to try it themselves, which is awesome. You should not try it either. You know, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> but seriously, every part of this is eerily reminiscent of Gollum. No! It's really poorly done. It looks bizarre graphically. It's all over the place. It's not even like mobile game level. It's just bad. But you know, I never want to throw a game out with the bath water. The analogy is messy. So I decided we're going to try it ourselves, including the Colossal Edition, which is a full $15 extra and brings you eight different exclusive film grain filters. Wow. <laughs> There's some color variants, a boss rush mode, some behind the scenes stuff on concept art and the music. You know what? I'm here for it. Let's check it out. You know, right off the bat, I'm struck by the soundtrack. It's pretty intense. Oh, <laughs> and if we go to extras, maybe this is where we're going to find our DLC stuff. Yeah. Boss fight, boss rush, art book all sorts of artwork okay music we get to see all of that that's kind of cool visual i can ch oh my god jesus christ dude i can change the skin or i guess the fur of the thing um wow okay these somehow look worse than i was expecting like jesus christ <laughs> Okay, you know what? We're going to go Mother Kong because she looks kind of like a melting wax statue. Okay, we're going to go with that. And um, filters, we can do noir movie. Oh, or a sepia tone. Bear in mind, this is $15 to get access to this extra screen of, oh, rage. You can just make it red or warm. Wow, that's... That's just remarkable. I'm going to go default because somehow the $15 charge makes it look worse. <laughs> but okay, enough. Let's actually play the game. Let's see what we got. Empty. Yep. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. It's a dinosaur opening cutscene. There are stories of God. Get immersed. Told by fanatics. Buckle. Stories of kings told by the oppressed. And fantasy stories told by the gullible. However, the stories of this age-old island are passed on from generation to generation by those willing to tell a much bigger tale. I mean, it already stories sounds pretty epic. The beasts and their king, the story of okay it was not long ago when the kong species began to disappear oh the bummer battles among the global warming i bet have existed long Classic. before anyone could even recall them still the survival of the kongs against larger and more ferocious creatures was no longer guaranteed as generations passed. True. The story I okay. will tell you starts at a time of danger and uncertainty for the last remaining Kong family. Okay. Raising a child, especially protecting him from the violent beasts, was hard work. Well, uh, show me ever present threats of the island the finger paintings are great but I want like, I want to play a game <laughs> on this decimated family okay load screen what is this starfield oh we're right in it okay um there there I am mama Kong <laughs> just listen to those sound effects okay just take them in slowly let them into your heart wow okay jump with a 
Oh, dude, already. This is so weird. It has like a weird cell shaded look to it. All of the boundaries of objects have like a little thin black line around it, like borderlands. It's really odd. Oh God. Okay, we're, this is what we're doing. We're just jumping. Okay. Okay, out of the, out of the cave, and then a cutscene. Oh, this whole game's a bad omen. <laughs> oh, look at that Jason Bourne camera shake. Decided to venture out in search of her family. Yeah, she's angry now. Wow. I'm in it. I, you know what? I'm immersed. Um, okay. Basic attack with X combo attacks. If you do it three times in a row, you can use a heavy attack. Okay. The animation also doesn't really change depending on how fast you're moving. What is happening to you? Look at this heavy attack. So when I do a heavy attack, it's like she tries to eat something. It's like swing and then nom. Like, what is that? I don't know what that's supposed to be. Uh, that's okay. Okay. You can block your enemies using LT. Okay. A little dodge roll. Are these like free animation packs? That's the vibe I'm getting. Cause they don't really match a gigantic gorilla monster, gigantopithecus monstrosity. And so I'm thinking that a lot of these are probably like from a unity online store or uh, the Unreal Engine shop or something, because this has the stink of those like copy and pasted games, like that one abandoned that was abandoned. It, it seems like that. It, it doesn't seem like a qualified team put this together. Oh man, and look at those water physics, baby. Wow, that's something else i don't know what it is but that's something oh and if the camera goes too low it cools the water surface so it just disappears <laughs> dude it's just so bad you know at least with like Gollum, i got the vibe that there were some really passionate people that worked on that like they really cared in a weird way about that game like the, you could tell they loved the lord of the rings and they wanted to do it right they just weren't really equipped for it this is just like weird lazy i, I don't even know what I, I don't know if you could even call this a cash grab because it's not really gonna make much money or anything like i, I just it, the whole thing is weird okay oh i have a rage let's do that okay i have rage mode same attacks i'm guessing i do more damage now but it's the same exact attacks. Okay. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> it's also just the same exact bush and tree copy and pasted everywhere. Just rotated slightly differently, which is like a common practice. But I also, man, I miss these like PS3 gen rocks where you can see the triangles for each surface because they're so low poly. <laughs> it's just, man. Wow. This is, this is remarkable. <laughs> Okay, a little leap mechanic. I can get on board with this. Some little platforming. The camera's not really a wide enough angle, but I can get behind some platforming. I'm okay with that. A little leap move. Okay, we'll grab these vines, climb around. It is very Gollum in its approach. Um, There's like no story other than I'm looking for my like Dada and baby. Kong. But you know what? Maybe that'll change. Maybe I'm about to get struck with like a Tarzan side story that's going to reinvent my life. Let's let's see what we're dealing with. The further into this I get, the more I'm feeling like the bizarre graphics are an artistic choice, which is almost stranger than if it was just an accident and they didn't mean for it to end up looking like this. But I'm starting to think that this was intentional, like this weird, low poly, overly vivid, cell shaded style is what they were going for and i don't really understand it because i think it looks like terrible 
<laughs> but who knows? Maybe that's just me. Maybe you like the look of this. I don't know. I will say that so far, I have no idea if I am going in the right direction or if I'm making progress. I, I have no clue because I, I just like, there's no indication. <laughs> I'm just running in, in circles. And now I'm stuck in a vine. Okay, well, there, okay, Jesus. <laughs> let's let's try this again. Jump up here. Okay, now I can move up it. Okay, a little clunky. You know what? I will give him credit. This is running better than Gollum. But I think Gollum was more of a video game. So far, this is just like run and jump. Oh. Now that's a jump scare. Baby Kong and Daddy Kong. Okay. It's a very concerned looking ape. Oh no, is Dada Kong gonna get got? Oh. And that's the boss fight. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I'll say the lock on camera is like super broken. <laughs> it's just not good. I'm not using that. Oh no, I got got. Oh jeez. No. And on that day, a super villain was born. Kong decided he was going to kidnap every blonde woman in America and climb towers while yelling at planes. This is the origin story. Or destiny. destiny. The last of the Kongs had survived thanks to his parents' sacrifice and his I mean, own perseverance he ran away <laughs> but yeah he persevered <laughs> okay so it's a monkey ape origin story of revenge and villainy where now what was that look at look at the hills do you see that what what is going on am i like tripping am i experiencing like what is that? I don't even know what that is. That's bizarre. That's like when you're driving on the highway and you've been staring off in the distance for a while on like a very long drive. And then you look off at something else and it looks like it's moving even though it isn't. But this is just like a mountainside doing it in a video game. And I don't really understand why. Yeah, it's all doing it. It's almost like it's supposed to be a feature. You see that? Like the textures are rolling as I move? Like, what is that? I don't get it. Okay, this is the most egregious example. Look at that. That cannot be intentional. What even is happening? <laughs> like, what is that? There's a whole boulder wall that's disappearing. What? I, I don't know. If this is a weird artistic like decision where they wanted to make it look like, oh, as you explore, the world reveals itself to you or something like that. I don't care if something like if you're playing a game and you think that something screwed up, it probably is like it doesn't really matter if if it was your intention. If players think something's wrong, something's wrong, because that's going to be their takeaway. They're going to walk away from the game being like, oh, yep, that was broken. And you're like, no, that wasn't a bug. That's a feature. Nobody gives a crap, dude. Like it, it just didn't play well. You know, I've said before, I don't really like beating up on games that like a team has put some effort into. Oh my God. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> what I was trying to say is I don't like making fun of or, or poking at uh, a game put together by a developer that's smaller. It might be just a few people trying to do something, trying to get, you know, a little foothold in the gaming industry because they're, they're doing it, you know, they're doing the thing. And even if the attempt might not be that great, at least they're, they're pursuing something, you know, and I, I think they should get some credit for that. However, when you charge real money for your game, I, I think at that point I have permission to 
poke fun. The Colossal Edition that I'm playing now, when not on sale, is $55. And this just launched as of today, yesterday, but when you're seeing this two days ago, I guess. And the base game by itself is $40 when it's not on sale. And at that point, if you're gonna charge 40 bucks for your game and it plays like this, I, I get to make fun of you. Like, I I'm sorry if it hurts your feelings, Iguana B developers and Game Mill Entertainment, but you're asking real money for a game that's barely real. Okay, I finally killed it. I earned a skill point. There's a skill tree? Oh my God, dude, there's like a pretty, elaborate skill tree jesus what seriously like this is a lot <laughs> i mean being honest seeing this level of work put into it like this isn't just a quick cash grab from what i can tell like they've actually put a little bit of effort in here that thing's five skill points really Wow. Okay. So how big is this game? Like how many skill points am I going to get at, during the run? You know what? It doesn't matter. The point of all this, maybe I just need to be more cold hearted with this. But when I see that somebody's put in a good amount of effort into this, they tried. It's not like they just threw something together off of like free assets and stuff like that. Last of Us ripoff game or abandoned or something else. Like they actually tried to put something together here. Yeah, it's not very good. Yeah, it's got a lot of problems and I don't think it's worth 40 bucks when other really, really good games are even cheaper than that. But at the very least, I'll give them credit. Like they're trying to build a game. They did the thing and a lot of people like me who talk about games for a living and do it all day, every day, we haven't put our own game out onto the marketplace yet. And so, you know, I guess they're doing something a little better than me. I'll, I'll give them that. You know what? Perhaps that's more broadly the lesson. When you price your game at like 40 bucks, you will be compared to other games that are $40. And it's the same if you charge 60 bucks for your game, you're going to be compared to other games that are 60, even if they had way bigger budgets or were put together by bigger teams. It's just going to happen. And in this case, charging $40 for this is aggressive. Oh, and then also $15 for these quick color swaps and then like a sepia filter or a noir filter is just like insane. I mean, look at this. You really think I'm going to pay $15 <laughs> for this? <laughs> like what? <laughs> Who looks at this and is like, you know what? I wasn't gonna upgrade to the uh, deluxe edition, but now, I mean, I can go red color or I can go sepia. Look at that. Wow, <laughs> that's that's tremendous, wow. It's like when my editor Jacob saw this game for the first time and saw that you could do these color filters, he's like, wow, you pay more to make the game look worse. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically what happens, dude. It's so bad. <laughs> so what's my verdict? Is this worse than Gollum? Is this gonna take the cake for the worst game of 2023? Honestly, I'm not sure. I, I do think it runs better than Gollum did. Gollum was just kind of broken and had a ton of bugs and weird stuff with it. This has bugs and things that are clearly not working properly, but at least it's a video game that's being delivered. And as far as I can tell, you can play it consistently, which was more than could be said for Gollum. Uh, pretty regularly, it would just break and crash and brick everything. It was just terrible. But at the same time, I feel like the people that worked on Gollum had a little bit more passion for the project. They cared a bit more. And you could tell, you know, they really poured their heart and souls into the lore and into building the story for that. Whereas this, it's like, oh, what if we made a game with King Kong? And then we showed his like mom and dad getting killed by a dinosaur. And so the whole game is you just trying to kill dinosaurs to get revenge. That is the extent of the story here. And perhaps most damningly, it's just not very fun. I mean, maybe it gets way better as time goes on and as you experiment with the skill trees and stuff. But at this point, I have zero incentive to keep going and I'm just left feeling baffled that they charged 40 bucks for this. So all told is Kong, what, what, wait, what's this game called? <laughs> I already forgot. Skull Island Rise of Kong. Is it as bad as people say? Yes, it is. Also, look at this. I just realized this. If you go down, this is the icon for the game. This little Unreal Engine icon right there. So it's defaulted. They didn't actually swap that out with anything custom. But when you hover over it, look 
at what they call the game, Monkey. <laughs> they didn't even go in and change their project name to Rise of Kong or Skull Island or anything. They left it as Monkey. <laughs> it's just you can't make it up so don't buy this don't do that because it's ridiculous you shouldn't reward this kind of game or this quality of game with your hard-earned dollars just don't do it let me suffer on your behalf i also may or may not immediately try to refund this game the moment we finish recording this video because it's way worse than even i was expecting and there is no way in hell i'm going to finish this for any reason other than just the memes but E even for that, I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Thanks for chilling with me. Thank you also for making my life possible. I mean, you create all of this by watching and supporting me. You helped me buy a house for my wife and my two little boys. And now we have a pretty epic, crazy big studio that we're kind of slowly moving into. I am humbled every day by your support. Never think I take it for granted. But with all that said, thank you for watching. I love you all dearly, and I'll see you in the next one. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.